Welcome back to another torch review. I have the S1R Baton 2 in for testing and this was sent in via Bantac for review. This has been looked at by quite a few people but I think perhaps I can add something into the mix with a few more tests later on. Running through the specs and features on the box you will see that we have five power levels with this. That compares to six previous that you had on the first version. When you take it out of the box you just have a warning here to remove the tab. You do get a battery case from Bantac and Olight also supply one in the box so you have two battery cases spare for this. Now first thing you'll notice is the design has changed a bit. It's a bit smaller and also they've changed the knurling instead of the traditional uh, laser engraved knurling that they come up with. This one has for want of a better word it's like a pineapple effect almost but I quite like it. It's quite grippy and it feels comfortable and they've also given you that upgraded double clip too. So the body is quite interesting in terms of the appearance, but it does feel quite good in the hand, that's the main thing. And there's your uh, magnetic charging at the base. The switch is slightly different as well, it's a harder substance, doesn't feel like soft silicone, um, almost like a plastic material. And that's your optical lens with the XML2 in cool white. I'm not sure if they're going to offer a neutral white on this, I suspect they will do later on. So you unscrew this from the top, there's the cell that's reversed in. And this is a custom cell like some of the previous ones that we've seen with Olight, but they've added an additional plastic protection insulator around the top. Even though the cell itself is protected, that's just to stop it shorting. Um, only thing with that is that it could be a bit trickier to charge if you put it into a charger. And there's your springs inside, you have two springs. Now you can use other batteries with this, but bear in mind with the standard Olight cell that I'm testing here, that's not a high drain cell, so that means to say that you can operate it up to the 600 lumen mark, but if you try to put it into turbo with that battery, what will happen is it will trip the protection. So that's just something to bear in mind, depending on if you're going to use other batteries with this as a spare or something. Now if I take that battery out, what I'll do now is test with another battery. That's quite a common cell. I tried this a while ago, that Olight. It's an okay cell. I mean, you'll get away with it up to 600 lumens. But if I put the SoShine battery in, which I tested uh, months ago now, that is not a protected cell. So what happens with that is you can use it up to the maximum turbo output of 1000 lumens, but you can't charge any other battery in the torch other than the custom one that is supplied with it. So that's a bit of a downside. I had hoped when the Warrior came out that they were moving away from that type of custom battery, but it is what it is. Moving on to the magnetic charger, that's also had a redesign and it's slimmer. They've changed the cable as well, which seems a little bit more pliable than the stiffer cable on the original, which I have on the right hand side. They've also moved the LED indicator from the stem, which was on the older one, to the base. So I'll show you that charging now. So it's just a little bit. Um, of a slightly strange design choice because you can see it here green then goes to red when it's charging and green when it's finished no problems with the termination on this it's uh, terminated exactly at 4.2 but it does mean that if you've got the torch up and the charger uh, directly on the surface you won't be able to see that charging light whereas with the older version you will you'll also note that the speeds are faster on the new version than this not by much by about 9 or 10 uh, milliamps but still that will reduce the charging time and this battery takes roughly around about 50 minutes to charge from flat. It's backward compatible with the other torches so both of them will work with Olights if you have other models. And this battery can take a fairly high charge but I prefer a slightly lower charge myself. Onto the wrist strap very much standard for Olight you have the adjuster and it's a low profile one and you also get that included drawstring bag which we've seen on previous Olights. Just handy to have that if you're going away or something, you can just put everything into the one bag, keep keep all the parts together. User Guide L will do a scan of that later on just to show you, but we'll go through the user interface now. So it's very typical for Olight, single press on and off, do have a mode memory, and then push and hold to cycle through the power levels. If you want to get to the moonlight when you're turning it on, just push it in for around about a second and that takes you to the half lumen output. And if you want to get to turbo, you just double press quickly and that takes you straight to turbo. For the triple press, this is, takes you to strobe and this works from on or off. And you also have a lockout. Just push and hold it in for a couple of seconds. That will lock the torch out. And when you try and press it again, the red will come up to unlock that. You just repeat the process. There is a timer function with this. 
I don't use it myself, but you have a choice of three or nine minutes. But if you want a sort of person that leaves a torch on, then that could be useful to have. Quick comparison with the On The Road M3, which is a budget clone Olight torch, for want of a better word different reflectors on this they've got an orange peel on that versus the optical lens on the Olight. In terms of size the Olight is also a bit smaller though there is a fairly significant price difference between them. That's a quick look at your battery level indicator and on the user guide just runs through everything that I've talked about with the user interface. The only point to note here is really that jump from 60 to 600 lumens which I'll come on to later. Battery came in just under the 550 milliamp hour mark, so touch under spec, but not too far off. And the magnetic base on this is actually very strong, didn't have any problems even on a smooth surface like the fridge where most torches slip around, so you won't have any complaints if you like the magnetic base. Some people do, and some people don't. There is some voltage that comes off of this. But if you short the contacts, nothing bad happens. There's no sparks or anything else like that. As far as the underwater test went, didn't have any problems with this half an hour. Usual tests that I do just to check see if there's any problems. And we'll start with the M3, which has that textured reflector. And you'll see on the right hand side, you do get a bit of spread with that, even though it's not as powerful as the Olight, which has a larger, more diffuse spot in the middle, which is typical of torches with that optical design on the front but when you take it up to a thousand lumens it does spread out quite a bit so a bit more power compared to the previous version although you wouldn't really notice the difference side by side. I'll run through some of the beam shots now and we'll come back with a few conclusions at the end. thoughts with the new Olight torch. In a lot of ways I quite like this in terms of the body design. They've made it a bit smaller, not that the original was particularly big because it was quite a compact torch, but this is quite a popular range from Olight for obvious reasons because of the convenience. It's very much a pocket torch and it has quite a high power output. So I like the new styling and design and it's quite practical in terms of the grip. If I were to look at the areas that I don't like, I would have hoped Olight would have moved away from the custom batteries. So if you want to charge it in torch, you are stuck with your own cells that you'll need to get. If you want spares, you'll have to get the Olight ones if you want to charge them in torch. The other gripe that I have is moving from level 3 to level 2, there's a big jump. So you have effectively three fairly low power levels on the torch and just two high ones. What I would have done if they were having five power levels instead of six is just space it out a bit more and give you a two or three hundred lumen output, which is a level which I use quite frequently, and you also preserve the battery life. 
Thanks for watching the video, I do appreciate it. If you've got any thoughts on this particular model or what you're looking for in an EDC torch, do drop a comment below and I will see you in my next video review very soon.